Um, welcome everyone to the Microsoft Loop user group. I had to check and see what it was called again. That's that's kind of the state of mind I'm in at the moment. Um, I'm uh, Daryl Webster. I've uh, done a bit of work in, in this space. Um, I'm a adoption and change management specialist for WM Reply. Um, and I'm all about trying to help people align technology to their needs. Um, and we've been running this user group for, it'll be a year in March, I think. So yeah, we've, we've uh, been tracking the progress of Loop and trying to learn it as we go. Um, and I'll hand it over to Rebecca, my co-host for today. Hi everyone, I know I know some of you on the call. I'm Rebecca Jackson and um, I'm a senior consultant at Avenard, general Microsofty nerd and I'm really pleased to be here to talk about uh, Loop with you all. Awesome, thanks Bex. Um, but yeah, thanks thanks for joining. Uh, you're here because you're interested in Loop. Um, I know that it has definitely been out for a while. Uh, we have a uh, a couple of new faces I haven't uh, met yet. So, um, Lotha, I think if I'm saying that correctly, welcome. And uh, Coralie. Um, so I know that uh, at least uh, four or five of us have definitely been using Loop on the call and uh, have been experimenting with it and trying to build it into our, our productivity. Um, so this is going to be an interesting, uh, definitely interesting session. But for those of you who are um, joining for the first time too, we're using a um interactive whiteboard uh provided by miro and uh, this was initially an idea about trying to give us a sense of what it might be like coming into loop when it is um up and running and fully available um but into our talk for today it is all about uh, discussing the announcements and yeah as bex had uh, introduced herself and, and myself we won't go through that again um but <laughs> there's um yeah, some good thoughts to to share. Uh, some very brief analysis. We don't want to go too deep. There's there's other times for that. But um, thinking about what we have seen of Loop at Ignite and uh, how does that match up with our expectations and our hopes and what we thought might have landed by now <laughs> is probably a good way to put it. So uh, I'll flick over to our slides and and I wanted to start out with a uh, probably one of the better videos that just took us through a, the scenario of loop from conception right through to using it in different places. Um, I said earlier that I'm having trouble sharing my my audio, computer audio, so I'll try and <laughs> I'll try and um, narrate it as I see it. Um, but we're going to cover off um, announcements around. We're actually finally seeing the loop app. Um, what are pages and workspaces look like now? They're not just concepts. Um, things like loop and and word online and does that blow your mind in terms of like what what we're, we're sticking something in word um com new components and third party experiences with with adaptive cards for sap and uh, for some organizations around sensitivity labels and dlp which has been potentially a barrier for people to use it all right so i'm going to play it through i'll try and narrate it as i remember what the content was and uh, try and try and uh, use that as a discussion point. We'll go back and, and talk about the different things. All right. Oh, that's going to be distracting. I can hear her, so <laughs> I'm going to mute that rather than try and repeat the narration. All right. So this is uh, a meeting or uh, just a group chat where people are trying to initially just get some thoughts and ideas together and they've chosen um, some a, a task table um, so they're using this to assign various different things for people to do so this is in teams chat that's nothing new but now we're using the loop application and that is um, adding a new page there's templates that they're using as a starting point which drop in different formats um, you're using uh, ability to be able to decorate your your loop. Um, they've mentioned people at the top of the page to try and call them out and bring them in. Um, and then there's the the loop content that they're able to bring in from that very same task that list that might have started in a group chat. They've added a link through to a, a presentation as well. And then we see also the the loop mobile experience, which is interesting to see their their first ideas and concepts. 
um, this page uh, is also about creating loops and we'll discuss a bit more about what the page is later but taking those loops um, they're also looking to bring it into whiteboard shortly there's word online and loop in, in word online so it's the same loop that's tracking right the way through so those marketing ideas have been in the word document they're in the email to get contributions and then we're circling back and we're taking a copy of that and dropping it back into another group chat with with leadership to try and give them some idea about what's going on. That's a voting table uh, there as well. So I know that their narration or script was a lot cleaner than that. Um, there was a nice story they had to tell. But you'll see from that, it actually kind of traces and tracks the way through maybe from ideation, coming up with ideas in conversation or in a meeting through to let's um, work on it all together, corral all the ideas onto a page and loop, um, potentially also working with it when you're mobile and on the go and uh, and then just seeing other places of where it is used. Um, so that was that was their, uh, I guess you'd say, demonstration of the scenarios of where loop can be used. And within uh, Ignite during the presentation, they had uh, a, a deeper dive to each of those. So what we'll do at this point, um, Bex and I are going to tag team and sort of just discuss some of the, the things that we saw and some of our thoughts um, going through some of the, the key updates and features there. Um, Bex, uh, how about you start with, with this and we'll just sort of discuss it for a bit. Um, so this is the app and that it's available, going to be available on desktop, browser and mobile. What were your thoughts on this? Well, I think first of all, I want to point out the opportunity for you to do really cool overdubs of Microsoft videos. Um, I'll, I'll just leave that there and, and let you play with it. Um, but in terms of the the kind of desktop experience becoming available, I, you know, probably like you was hoping we'd have that already, but very excited to see more progress on it. Um, it's feeling more real and it's coming. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still, you know, uh, f feels a little bit far away to be able to to be able to play with it. And in my mind, one of the biggest things that floats around on this one is that whole what to use when piece, right? Mm. I'm personally excited for Loop because I have so many ways that I want to use it. Um, but I'm like, cool, I'm so excited about talking to clients about this other thing in in the landscape, another what to use when um, that, that we, uh, certainly for in the consulting world, will um, need to help clients explain and understand. Mm. Yeah, it, it is a, yeah, yet another thing. And, you know, you can look at it from the perspective that, oh, well, that Microsoft are definitely trying to compete with other products that are, that are going in the same direction, so they don't want to miss out on that piece of the market. Um, Notion, Google's doing a similar thing with bringing sort of component type things into their documents and um, Coda and all sorts of other products. Um, but, yeah, uh, what, I'm, what I'm excited to see with this piece is – Okay, it is definitely going to follow a similar pattern where there is a, a web page, there will be an app. Um, we're starting to see that the workspaces and pages weren't just um, uh, things from a sizzle reel or a buzz video, that they actually are uh, beginning to, to form much like, like we expect. Um, and that you know the the mobile app it is important for people to be able to contribute to these things when they have their ideas when they are on the go, and so yeah, good to see that that coming together. Um, yeah, and some good thoughts there too from from others. Well, we'll we'll keep chugging along there, and then we'll we'll come back to to group discussions. But this was this was good to see. Um, and I know I didn't put a slide in here for this, but I'll say it early too. There's the the loop private preview that they've advertised and opened up. Uh, so there is quite a wait list there. Some of us were um, taking a quick look at the the page early on. And while it wasn't quite functioning correctly, we might have seen something leak a couple of months ago that, that was similar for um, Microsoft staff to, to dog food it. Um, yeah, it was interesting to see, you know, you could sign up. I, I even got to a point where it was showing me a page where I could create my workspace, but then it would fail me and they shut that down as well. So it was just interesting to see, you know, what the experience was like. Um, sorry, not sorry for the responses there. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Um, so yeah, loop pages and workspaces, um, more than just the app, but but seeing it uh, come together. 
Uh, I was interested to see templates and sure they've come up with a few ideas at the bottom of the page of, of how you can quickly get a page together for a certain purpose. We as a team are going to center around a decision. Um, here's a few headings that we might um, start off with and, you know, collaborate with. Um, but, but before I talk about templates, um, what I, I had a misconception really of what a loop page was uh, when I, when we create a component today, it creates a document in the background, um, a loop document. It sits in a OneDrive, and I thought, okay, that's the page because you don't have to just stick with one component. You can keep adding more components, but it's not a page. Hmm. Um, we'll learn a bit more, but uh, the page is a thing in its own right, and you add components to it. Um, so just think about it as a way of framing up the components that we might create or use and, and collect together. Um, templates. Uh, I hope that we'll get the opportunity to create our own templates. I'm sure we will. Uh, a lot of the Microsoft products kind of follow follow that pattern. They give you a, a way to start and then they allow you to create your own. Um, but yeah, the... Adding components to the page. Um, Bex, do you remember what that experience looks like? Um, no, I don't remember what it looks like from from the videos, but I did want to touch on your your comment around kind of the the pages and and components relationship because I mm. was when from la you know from the announcements last year when you know, when we first were hearing about this stuff in my mind I was immediately like cool the component is the little thing we put in the page which will be its own thing and then we have this workspace I was seeing this layering um, but what you've said also makes sense to me and I also think that's going to be part of the challenge in talking to people about it in my head i'm really relating the whole loop experience to what i see customers clients etc asking for in terms of a wiki um mm. so so that that kind of structure i i that i made some assumptions um it's going to be interesting to see how other people relate to those assumptions or make, yeah. make their own assumptions i should say sorry 5 a.m brain <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah, and people have made comparisons, of course, to OneNote as well, where you've got your pages and your sections, and then you can stick anything on a page. So uh, some of the ways that we work today with products like OneNote will transfer nicely through to this way of working in Loop. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm saying too at the moment, it's probably where OneNote should be. Um, yeah, I agree. Is, hmm. For sure. And I, I also love that they um, are bringing in, uh, again, you know, we're looking at sizzle reel type stuff, as, as you said, but the fact that they're showing templates so early um, shows to me that Microsoft really is thinking about the user experience and the challenges um, that people have in, in picking up new technologies. Templates mm. are really key for helping people. Um, I know the one we've got on the screen, it says team decision, right? It helps people make a decision about what they're going to do with this, with this product when they encounter it. So um, I think that's smart thinking on Microsoft's part that will pay, pay off. Yep, yep, a good starting point. Pages will will function like components anyway. There'll still be live editing. You'll still see, you know, who who's in the page, and you get that kind of sense. Especially like when when I'm working in the loop with, or even a, just a document with people in my team. Oh, someone's live in here with me. I feel more connected. I can give them a quick chat or a call to say, hey, let's let's um, you know, align with some of these things in here. Um, there was also this point there where adding a link to a workspace. And so um, in the demo, there was a, a PowerPoint link and you added that to it. And that um, feels definitely minimum viable product at this point as we look at it, because you, know, you and I, Bex, have talked about it. We hope that there'll be that file picker that we see across um, many different experiences in M365, showing you your recent files so that you don't have to go hunting for it or that you don't have to go to the file, grab the link and paste it in and see it in the workspace. But yeah, I'm sure all of those sorts of things will come for consistency. Um, moving on to loop components in Word Online. Um, what? Um, why would we do that? Um, don't we already have collaboration in Word Online? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'll be interested to hear everyone's thoughts here in the, in the breakouts. We're actually just about getting to that 
critical size where we can have two breakouts. So that'd be great. Um, but Bex, what were your thoughts on seeing Loop within Word Online? Um, excited because I uh, selfishly just want to be able to put Loop in more places. Um, I you know great potential, um, but again, again, it's another thing. I think you know there's some people who are going to be excited and really embrace this stuff, and the, and then this is one that I think is going to um, break people's brains a little bit. Um, I, I think it's it's really cool. I like the idea. Uh, you know, I use Word a lot. I'm sure people on the call do of being able to put a loop in a Word document and get feedback on it without people kind of having to look around the rest of the document. You know, like I could put a loop component in there and go, hey, can you give me feedback on this component as opposed to using a comment or track changes, which is sometimes just doesn't give enough in terms mm. of um, word, like wording, the ability to write lots of stuff and, and the experience. But it, again, I, yeah, I think it's going to break some people um, in terms of the use case and the, vi and the viability. Yeah, I, I'm with you on the, the collaboration that we already have within Word. Quite mature, comments, reply to comments, turn a comment into a task. I mean, it, it's a task, but it's within Word. Um, I don't think it quite yet goes through to Microsoft to do or any task centric kind of um, platform. But we already have that concept of I have a task to perform and complete within a document. Someone's told me I need to brush up on this paragraph or I need to add some content here. So Word already has quite mature tools for that, um, track changes as well and things. But but where um, it's interesting is it, it's like, OK, Sometimes we're we're working and we're trying to think, okay, here's the document, here's the conversation, here's the tasks, and we're going to all these different places and things to do this, where this is about bringing that collaboration and coordination experience into the document, uh, as well as the other places that we might see it, like within our loop or within an email. Um, so that's that one aspect of coordinating um, work together. And that it won't necessarily print out on the page with it, of course. Um, so don't worry too much about that and ruining your beautiful document. But the other thing about it too is compartmentalizing contributions. That concept of I don't need to share the whole document with it with these people to get their input. I can say, here's what I've got for a paragraph. Phil, Maddie, can you contribute to this? Um, just give me some thoughts, and then we can take what we all come up with out of that loop and put it into the document so that it's it's like dividing the document without giving full access to it. So yeah, interesting. Um, moving on, uh, new components. Now, the Q&A component, I don't have it here as a screenshot, but that, that was mentioned, it, it was available in preview for a bit. That's the Q&A one where you can put into an email and um, list a few questions and, and crowdsource some answers. So that's cool. Uh, it, it's just now it's available within within Outlook uh, outside of preview, generally available. But the interesting one they showed uh, during Ignite was um, polls. Uh, it's a poll component and it is powered by forms. It isn't, it isn't loop. I mean, it's transported into our loop experience using loop, but it's forms and they showed a couple of examples of a multi-choice and a word cloud. And that, that's interesting, like this thought of, okay, loop components or adaptive cards, like with other third-party products, um, uh, this is a fluid way of bringing in the other things that we need to use for teamwork, for collaboration, for coordinating things um, into the aggregated loop experience. So this is interesting too, like you might think, okay, we can run a poll in a meeting like we could here, get some contributions, get people to you know vote on things or share their words or, or, or the like. But then being able to take that same poll and put it in other different places uh, into email, it's it's super interesting. Um, would you, yeah, I would think, you find I think use? this one that's going to get um, real, a lot of traction because um, in my experience and interested like it, you know, people on the call, maybe if you agree that people are going to like this, give me a, give me a thumbs up or something. I find that people just love Q&A and polls, right? And the easier it is, the better. And the fact that they can throw it in, I, I, I reckon this will, this will be, you know, the killer component um, and, and we'll see a lot of usage of, of this one. People are going to be really, really into it. Even, you know, even if it doesn't give people the ability to, you know, 
you know, even if they're not using it to put it somewhere else or to, if, even if it's difficult to access that back end information, which is something we often find with, with, a, with a newer mm. app, um, this is something that I can immediately use. I want to throw a poll in here. People can use it. It's one and done. Mm. I, I reckon we'll see a lot of it. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, we're always looking for different ways to to get people to interact and to feel like they're being heard. So polls are pretty critical to that. They do have the voting table, which, again, that was announced at Ignite last time, and it's still coming. But we saw it a lot in the videos, this table where you could suggest an idea and then the final column allowed you to upvote it or show your support. So th th I think we're going to see some crossover too with – components that are going to do similar or the same job but but be used in different places so all good that's fine um third party example um they showed sap and some of the work they had done into creating adaptive cards again much like the form example powered by loop but not loop in its own right um it is content that's coming through from and I, forgive me, I haven't used SAP, but um, for HANA, and so you're able to bring these records in. And so this is about giving more detail than than what we might see on just a typical adaptive card. But what we also saw is an example of you could edit this card, and um, it was live data. So you could you could share this into a chat. You could get someone to update some figures or add some detail around a customer. And uh, that was all live and going back to all the various different places that this system could be seen. So imagine that, being able to share from these third-party systems, bring those into the conversations, uh, make sure that people are discussing the very latest up-to-date thing and, um, yeah, just, just prompting people to update it. Uh, not too much more to say about that. I mean, that that's... That they're holding that up as a, as a good example. Um, I don't know of other organizations that are developing in this space, but that probably is the case. And that's the hope. I think there was, um, maybe it was. Uh, There's some Dynamics 365 yes. stuff as well. Is that what you were um, thinking of? Because for, for me, I look at this and I see this is another game changer, but it's a really specific user group, right? Um, mm. You know the, the people who use these applications, the the adoption challenge that we get, and I've played you know with with some of these in the past and talking to people about getting them to put the data in um, mm. can be really challenging. And it's also incredibly important and business critical. You know we're looking at dollar figures on a page, right? Getting getting that sort of data accurate, right, updated real time can be can be difficult but important. Mm. Bringing it into you know you, you say it all the time, Daryl, that flow of work, you know, in into the flow of work I think it's going to help adoption and I actually think the people who need to do this stuff are going to really love it because it's going to be so easy for them to be able mm. to jump in and update stuff without having to navigate to the native application um, exactly. which are which are often not fun right um, applications like um, Safahana and um, Dynamics and Salesforce and things like that that these people use um, can be really challenging to to learn to navigate depending on how your orgs configured them. Mm. Yeah, I think that's but one of the superpowers. I'm going to say that. Yeah, I will. Sorry, marketing term now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> one we, of we the forgive you. Of uh, of of this loop uh, experience is that yeah, if you if you just see a hyperlink to hey um, check out this record or I need you to update this, um, not very engaging. Sure, you're going to click on it and do what you need to do. But but by seeing the live data right in front of you, you're more drawn to actually doing it and, and also seeing it. And then it's all live and easy to check with whoever's in the conversation. So it, it's just removing one layer to getting to that level of collaboration. The last um, update, which was quite important for orgs that have really held off from using Loop because of security reasons. Uh, <laughs> Phil's pretty happy to see this. Um, is sensitivity labels and DLP. Um, this is a, a big one, you know, that what it, it, for me, it's also a signal that, hey, Loop is just another Office document. It is like just Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You know, these DLP functionality, the sensitivity labels are, are all going to be 
a thing for loop as well um oh, so my screenshot doesn't really show it very well i can cut that off in the in the crop but it's over here on the left hand side where you wouldn't you know you, you can see your sensitivity labels across your different documents you'll be able to choose from the same set it will apply the same security that you might have set up for each of those labels and in this example it was uh, checking for credit card numbers and and um, uh, the document so it gives a warning to say well you know you're this is breaking policy and i've also seen a, a couple of other examples too in some of the mock-ups um, where they're considering uh, watermarks and other various things just to really clearly call out to people that um, the, the sensitivity label that's been applied or whatever you've taken, whatever action you've taken, um, this is a sensitive document. Don't think of it just as a, a scrap of paper like it might feel with a loop and a loop component. It, it is still a document and it's still protected by security. Um, but yeah, that, that would have, I mean, Okay, Phil, I'll invite you because you, you seem pretty happy about this. Come off mute and tell yeah, us. Yeah, I want to hear what Phil has to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute and let let yeah. Phil tell us cool things. <laughs> cool stuff. No, basically, I think you know from the uh, sensitivity label side of things, is that there's so much regulatory compliance stuff out there for so many organisations now that if you, every time Microsoft throws a new feature over the wall, the first question they ask is, "Can I make this compliant? Can I make this in line with it?" Can I use it? And the governance and compliance stuff always comes later and later and later. They're putting a whole lot of um, effort and into all the stuff to do around purview, which is the which is the uh, brand for all the compliance stuff at the moment. I mean, most of the roadmap updates I see these days are nothing but purview. Mm. Um, the new things that they're doing around that, and to have that in loop is is you know finally is great because that opens it up for organizations to you know to, to start using it a bit more yeah um, at least it's steady and slowly when when they do it because always there's concerns about oh you know i've got that loop i've got that loop in an email now uh okay how do i get that out of e-discovery so to, to, you know to check cases right. and stuff yeah yeah and there's there's that gap that's that, that they've, they're actually plugging that as well so um as soon as they got that more of that um in place, the, you know, the, the more we'll get usage of, of, of Loop overall. Yep, yep, definitely. We pretend um, that that's exactly what I said because Phil said it so much more eloquently and let's copy and paste it into the next session. Well, I think you've actually trained your avatar somehow to move the lips at the same time as Phil is narrating his, his response. So I Excellent. think that was quite clever. Yeah. Um, I don't have an ending slide, but I do have uh, the breakout rooms ready to go. We do have enough people to, I think it's about two or three people per room. So um, please don't drop please off. Don't. I know some people uh, do this. They go, okay, seeing the presentation, I'm off. And then we might end up with one person in the room. <laughs> but I'll, I'll hit the, the open button so that we all go off to our twos and threes. And I'll join you in the room too. Um, uh, and just sort of float between the two rooms. We'll, we'll speak for a couple of, um, for 20 minutes or so um, as small groups. But um, the goal here too, uh, I'll just share the link again into the chat and change this to edit. So this link, please don't make my rooms disappear. There we go. This, um, if you open it up, will give you edit rights now to be able to go into the board. And what we'll do, zoom out a bit. There are two areas. Um, we've got two questions to discuss, and you may have used a, a whiteboard or something before, but just to recap, it's double click on a post-it note and then type your response. I'll just bring you all to me as well, just while I'm just to help you focus on, on where we are. Um, so you can, uh, you know, discuss this in breakout groups. Uh, if you feel inclined and I encourage you to do so, just drop your, your thoughts on there too as, as people are, are chatting away. You know, what were some of the impactful uh, announcements that you think uh, are going to be quite impactful in your environment and, and to your own work? And then what sort of feedback might you give to uh, Microsoft about the announcements and the roadmap for Loop? Um, so I will go back to our breakout rooms. Yes, those are sitting there writing. 
I'll hit open, and you're going to just beam to these rooms um, one by one as these things open up. So it'll take you off to a separate meeting, and then after 20 minutes or so, um, I'll, I'll send you a quick warning and we'll beam you back to, to this uh, main meeting. I think that is everyone back. Yeah, sorry, I didn't I didn't type a warning. <laughs> Usually I would send something in chat and say, hey, we're closing in a few minutes. Um, but I looked at the time and thought, oh, we better – a bit of yoink, yoink you out of that meeting group and <laughs> back into it. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for for coming along and and having a good chat about uh, the reflections. I see there's a, a number of different thoughts and notes on the board, so that's fantastic. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks Bex too for for joining me and and doing the roundup. Um, I think in summary, like I know we were all waiting for some of these things to arrive a lot sooner and that one of the challenges we all have <laughs> is trying to help people maintain that interest and get into the habit of using loop, even if it is a few little buttons at the bottom. So um, I'm sure you're all doing a great job trying to model that and, and help people see the value in it. Just keep thinking around the different scenarios that people uh, can use loop. And, and I think like one that has been effective and valuable to me has always been adding it to a meeting um, ahead of time, you know, so that you've got that place to take your meeting notes and you're actually pulling it up and using it within the meeting is, has been quite useful. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you'll all get a call at some point from the private preview group. Um, so yeah, that's that's October. Um, I'll be running the same session a bit later on today. And again, thanks, Bix, for your support with that. But um, yeah, I'll be a bit do, more awake at the next one. You will, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'll still be an avatar though. Oh no, that's fine. Perfectly fine. Um, yeah, but yeah, looking forward to to seeing you all uh, next time. And if you do have any thoughts and other things you want to share around how you're using Loop and and the like, do post it into that LinkedIn group. Um, I. I I try and keep things going there with the occasional post and I could post a lot more, but I don't want it to be all about what's Daryl's daily vlog and using loop. No, it's about a community. Let's contribute things in there and, and share. And I've learned Andreas that if you're presenting on loop and you're telling people about it, then I expect to see something from you in there too. And the LinkedIn group. Are you, are you a member? Uh, yes, of course. Um, Excellent. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. Next will right. be November 15th, so remember me if I've got to be Yeah, yeah. Um, and good to see you along too, Amelia. It's, it's really cool. So, um, yeah, thanks, everyone. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the, in the group.